mountain ranges, the most dramatic landforms on Earth. Many geologists are drawn to understand the mountain building and head for the hills. But what happens on the edge of the mountains, the mountain fronts? What are their structure? We'll try to answer that question at the edge of the Western Alps. It's accessible and rather easy to visit, with great geology too, rising up above the sunflowers. So we're right on the edge of the Alpine range in Southeast France. We can see the high plateau there, that's about a thousand meters above sea level. And it climbs and crashes down to the plains down there, which drop down to about 200 meters above sea level. So we've come here to look at the structure of the mountain front. Let's go and explore some of the rocks around here, particularly down there in those gorges, which provide natural sections through the mountain front. The village of pont en royan makes for a great base, built at the mouth of a gorge that carves through the mountain front. But we have to leave the cafes behind and head up through the network of narrow alleyways. So I'm on my way up to a viewpoint called Trois Chateaux above the village of pont en royan Bit of a trek. Let's just get up out of the village. Right, well the view's pretty good from here, but let's get to the real viewpoint. Well that's pretty good, but it gets better still. So those limestones up there, forming those cliffs, well they rise up to an elevation about 900 meters above sea level. These are Cretaceous limestones, a unit called the Argonian. So where is it if we come over here? Well that's the Alpine foreland. Flat topography. Go down 400 meters below sea level and you find the Argonian limestone again. So how does that plateau of limestone we saw at the start come to be so high? What is the mountain front structure? So let's flip this view. A high plateau on the right, the same limestone underground in the foreland on the left, and in between the mountain front monocline. So what structure accommodates the uplift of the plateau from where the limestone should be, level with this ruler, and deeply buried? Well, in 1986, Ian Van, Rod Graham and Tony Haywood published a paper outlining the options for mountain front structures, and they gave four distinct alternatives. This is the setup, what they called the mountain front problem. Where do the displacements that cause the uplift go towards the foreland? And these are their solutions, structural geometries that can accommodate the D 
differential uplift of rocks compared to their locations on the foreland. Solution one has displacement passing out from the mountain front to structures developed out in the foreland. Solution two has the mountain belt burrowing into the foreland, displacement accumulated by back thrusting, transport of the foreland back over the top. Solution three has the thrust front buried progressively as it moves by synkinematic sedimentation. And finally, solution four has the rapid loss of displacement splaying out into the mountain front monocline. So we have four different solutions to the mountain front problem and some great outcrops to test them out. But which of these alternatives work here on the front of the Alps? Well, let's go around this landscape and collect some more detailed observations, and then we'll put together a story. So what about solution one? Displacement pumped out into the Fallen Basin. Well, this is what happens further north in the Western Alps. Here's the front of the subalpine mountains, and here's the structures that form further out. And we can show their relationship on a cross section. So the subalpine mountains aren't the edge of the alpine deformation. Their uplift is accommodated by slip transferring out to the Jura Hills in the foreland. But what of the Vercors? Well, here, the mountain front is abrupt. The foreland, unlike the Jura, is undeformed. So this solution doesn't work for us here. So let's try solution two. Any sign of back thrusting at the mountain front? Let's look at the front of the monocline back down in pont royal which of course would be convenient for a cafe visit. So this is a bedding plane. And on the plane, I could see all these rather spectacular calcite fibers, more or less up and down the dip direction of the bed. And if I look at them, I can see that I move off wall rock onto fibre going like this, implying that the eroded bed that lay on top moved up relative to the one we're seeing underneath. Apparently a back thrust, but I think it's due to flexural slip on the fold structure on the monocline. Flexural slip is to be expected regardless of whichever mountain front solution we adopt. So we need to try a bit harder and visit the next gorge along from pont en -Royon. So this is the mountain front monocline coming right over. Let's see what goes on in this major monocline structure. These limestones dipping towards the foreland are the Ogonian. We can trace out bedding, and this is folded on structures that verge towards the mountains, and they're also thrusts cutting the bedding. So back thrusts in the monocline. we can return to pont en -Royal and look up its gorge to rocks at the crest of the mountain front monocline. Well, it's all a bit noisy in the gorge, but we've come inside the monocline here. Right at the top, you can see the beds coming over and down. And in the core of it, 
the thinner bed of material is folded and those folds verge away from the foreland, their back folds. Here's bedding. And this is their vergence, away from the foreland. And actually up here above the valley bottom, we can see within that massive Agonian limestone, a fault structure as well that climbs up and over, peaks at the top of the hill, down and out again, which actually, if you think about it, is long, short, long. It's another back fold, fold that verges or fold pair that verges away from the foreland. We can summarize these structures onto our cross section. Although there's no sign of a major back thrust, there is local back thrusting and back folding. But now, let's check out solution three. What's the relationship between these tilted Agonian limestones that define the mountain front monocline and sediments of the foreland basin? So let's step back out into the foreland. Did the limestones overthrust the foreland basin strata? So to test that idea, let's come away from the limestones on the mountain front a lot of traffic here. See what's happening in the fallen basin sandstones that lie just here. Well, it's quite difficult to make out bedding in these uh, fallen basin sandstones, but the bedding is coming down like this along that grassy terrace there, inclined quite steeply towards the foreland. So let's add the sandstones onto our cross section. So the thrust belt didn't just overrun over the top of the fallen basin sediments because they're tipped up just as much as the mountain from monocline. So this solution doesn't work for us. What about the fourth idea? That the thrust elevating the Vercor plateau dies out rapidly towards the foreland. Well, we can't get in the subsurface to see it, but there are telltale signs. Let's get back into the village. Well, it's a sunny Sunday afternoon, 35 degrees C. The river's full. We've not come down here to watch people jumping in off these terraces into the river, though they may do that. We've come here to look at the structure. And bedding comes down like this. But cutting the bedding are a whole series of very small thrusts making fractures in prime top left to bottom right, shunting through the dip panel of the monocline. And we can add these small thrusts onto our cross section. They suggest that thrusting is spreading out, cutting through the monocline, exactly what we'd expect for a main thrust losing its displacement into the fallen basin. So, although we've seen indications of back thrusting and back folding here in the monocline structure, they're quite small. I think this is an example overall of a thrust losing displacement in a forwards direction. And it's that that defines the mountain front here in this part of the Alps. But whatever's going on, this is certainly a great place to come and see mountain front structures. This has been an example of tectonic detective work to look at the edge of the Alps. You can come here too to follow the story or to challenge it. Or indeed, you could try to investigate your own examples. They're all out there waiting for you, the fronts of mountain belts.